Good evening. Who wants to hear what's going on? <laughs> Who wants to learn why things happen? I'd like to know. Hello. Hi, JV. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Rodney. Hi, Polly. Welcome to my world that's not falling apart, but falling apart in my head. <laughs> not really. Hi, Mike. In everything, there is a lesson. And so we learn it. Together in the world. Good evening, Pete. It's like 9.30 and I'm still having coffee, but that's okay. Hi, Omar. Good evening, everyone. Okay, my cat is trying to get situated underneath my feet. And we're going to be doing some Bible study. But we're also going to have a quick synopsis of my life. Because if you guys have been following me, about, um, I think we're like 65 days into my walk with Christ. Um, pretty much devoted all my time to learning the word, learning um, what we're supposed to be doing, trying to teach you guys, trying to be a good example, helping others, living according to what the word, right? So I was doing a really good job. <laughs> Gave it, you know, the Lord um, healed me from drinking. So that's good. I've been having a good time. Everybody was good. So I thought, just the other day, I was reporting on all of the blessings that were were happening. Hello, everyone. I have to take you off of, like, things. So, okay, can't text while I'm on film. Okay, honey. Um, so, I was reporting about how wonderful life was. And life is still wonderful. Don't get me wrong. It's just that things happen in an instant. And... If anyone knows me, I'm always blaming everything on the devil and the uh, the cunningness of the devil. But sometimes, I don't know. I don't know. I was just reading. I was reading a story about when Jesus removed the demon from the man, and he was acting all crazy. He was walking around naked and stuff. And he saw him, he's like, what are you doing here? Why are you here? And it turned out that the guy, the demon, had a bunch of demons in him. So he's like, what's your name? He's like, what? He's like, well, that's Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is like, hey, dude, what's your name? No, Jesus is like, what's your name? So he says his name is Legion. So he's like, please don't send us to the abyss, which is hell. So even the demon knows how terrible it is. It's so bad that the demon who's from there doesn't want to go back. That says a lot. Okay. So then he's like, put him in, put us in the pigs. So he puts him in the pigs. He put them in the pigs and the pigs run into the like water and they drown and they die. So I don't know what happens to the period after that. They don't really say, I don't think, but I mean, the fact that that was kept in the story says that that actually happens, okay? Things that are possible, I think that's why they kept it in the story, because they're relevant. And, you know, we don't see what's really there sometimes in other people, maybe. And so you think it's good, or maybe love is blind, you know, love is blind, sometimes love is blind. But then it can't be too blind, because then that's dangerous. So the Lord is just opening. I just read something, and this is really weird. It's not weird, it's not weird at all. It's God always talking to me. So I was trying to figure out, like, you know, my kid got in trouble. Big, 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 big trouble. And tomorrow's a big, big day of trouble. And so, like, I was being all good. 
And he was being all good, getting A's and B's. He was having friends, being very responsible. You know, he went to town, had some new friends. I thought he was doing good. <laughs> he made a bad decision. And now we're in a situation. So, it's kind of like... I have this feeling inside, like, is it, I'm not worried, and that scares me that I'm not worried, like, I should be like, oh my god, but I'm not, and it's like, I'm almost like, I'm not, I'm not, saying, I'm not sure if it's at peace, God says that we're going to be at peace if we're in Christ, I cried, but you know why I cried, I cried because I was embarrassed, because now it's like, people are going to know, oh, not only is it like crazy Diana, now it's crazy Chase and X, Y, Z. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what, there, there's not supposed to be two crazy people in one family. That's bad. Okay? And for some reason, this kid wants to be like me, and he acts like me, and he's not even like me at all. He's totally different. But he created this character of everyone else except for himself. It's very bizarre. But anyway, so I was saying, I've been doing all these things right, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But it's like, that's not how we get. Okay, so it was like Romans 2, 2. Let's do Romans 3, okay? God's faithfulness. What advantage, then, is there in, the, in being a Jew? Or what value is there in circumcision? Much in every way. First of all, they have been entrusted with the very words of God. What if some did not have faith? Will their lack of faith nullify God's faith? Fullness? Not at all. Let God be true, not every man and every man a liar, as it is written, so that you may be proved right when you speak and prevail when you judge. But if our unrighteousness brings out God's righteousness more clearly, what shall we say? That God is unjust in bringing his wrath on us? I'm using a human argument. Certainly not. If that were so, how could God judge the world? One might argue, if my falsehood enhances God's truthfulness and so increases his glory, why am I still condemned as a sinner? Why not say, as we are being slanderously reported as saying, and some claim that we, uh, we say, let us do evil that good may result. Let us do evil that good may result. The condemnation is deserved. What shall we conclude then? Are we any better? Not at all. We have already made the charge Jews and Gentiles alike are under, are all under sin. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands, no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is none who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. Their poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark their ways. And the ways of peace they do not know. And the way there is no fear of God before their eyes.
I was pure. And now I'm blemished. And my son was pure. And now he's blemished. I am fearful of the Lord. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says those who are under the law so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in his sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we have become conscious of sin. There it is. I read that earlier. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in the sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. So then that is where our choice, the free will, comes in. Because before, we could be like, oh, well, we didn't know God didn't want us doing that. But now, because we're all in it, and you guys know who you are, <clears throat> We're aware and we're conscious. And when we're conscious, it's that Holy Spirit that condemns us that you're like, don't do it. Oh, and he's right there. He tells you don't do it. It's not, it's not. God speaks to you in a low, quiet whisper, but the Holy Spirit is very clear. There's like a knot in my heart. It's like it's broken. I'm going to try really hard not to cry, you guys. It's not going to work, though. I'm a crybaby. And you know how, oh my gosh, how like... He made his choices. He tried to be a good mom. Good role model. I was doing so good I didn't drink. I was home making dinner. Um, who knows what kids need these days? I really don't know. I don't know. Can't babysit them though, you know what I mean? I was home. But yes, busy. I'll be so busy doing so much stuff. But now, a righteousness from God, apart from law, has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness from God comes through the faith in Jesus Christ. To all who believe. You bring your family to the cross. And at one point, you're all so pure. The whole trio of you. And then we left that window open, you guys, that little tiny window. There's no screen. And sin entered. And it grew. And it bit us in the ass. And I thought I was so aware. I thought I was so aware. Guarding my thoughts so close. Mm -hmm. You give in to selfish desires, that's what it is. 
He tells you sin comes from our selfish desires. And then from sin comes shame. But the thing is this. You get into this cycle because now the enemy is winning. And I have shame. And I shouldn't have shame. Because no matter what, <laughs> I am a friend of God. And all things work together for my good. And I have the boo-poos. I have the boo-hoos for myself. And I have the boo-hoos for others. Ooh. This walk is hard, you guys. Enemy comes all sorts of ways. And the enemy is just you sometimes. <laughs> and it's like... Uh... I'm in this word constantly, trying to learn his ways four or five times a day for the last two months. Learning, 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 learning. Asking questions, digging, trying to do what's right. But if we weren't weak and if we didn't sin, we wouldn't need Jesus. We wouldn't need him. So we're built this way. But I don't like feeling like I let him down. I hate that feeling. So I just had an A on my report card for a good job. And being a good little student teacher. And in the principles of living... Two Fs, maybe a C for friendship. Definitely a B. Uh, if not a D for girlfriendish. <laughs> I was doing good. I was a good student. What's funny is that I was sitting here teaching the world when I should have been teaching my kid because he hasn't grasped these principles yet. And for some reason, they're just not sticking. So that is a definite, ultimate release of power for me to God. Because I've tried. But I've never tried to pray for my son. <laughs> Not the way I should. I really don't pray for myself, though, either. Oh, I'm such a weirdo. So let's keep learning. What comes from Jesus and faith in Jesus? We are in Romans 3.22. <laughs> There's my 22, boys. Oh, I know you're with us, Papa. I know. Mm. He's good. He is good to me. Okay. Here we go. It's dark in here. The righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ. To all who believe, there is no difference for all. All have sinned and fall short the glory of God and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ 
Jesus. God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. He did this to demonstrate his justice because his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his justice at the present time, so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Where then is boasting? It is excluded. On what, on what principle? On that of observing the law? No, but on that of faith. For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from observing the law. Is God the God of law? Is God the God of Jews only? Is he not the God of Gentiles too? Yes, of Gentiles too, since there is only one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through the same faith. Do we then nullify the law by, the faith, by this faith? Not at all. Rather, we uphold the law. See? Again. What then shall we say that Abraham, our forefathers, discovered this matter? About, in this matter. In fact, Abraham was justified by works. He had something to boast about, but not before God. What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now, when a man works, now when a man works, his wages are not credited to him as a gift, but an obligation. However, to the man who does not work but trusts God, who justifies the wicked, his faith is credited as righteousness. David said the same thing when he speaks of the blessedness of the man to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sins the Lord will never count against him. Thank you for that, Lord. That's fantastic news. Again and again we sin against him. I don't know how this... <sighs> oh my goodness. I don't know how God deals with us with the nonsense that we do. It's like sin against him again and again. It's just like... And he's just like, it's okay. I love you anyway. When I'm like... <sighs> like, of course, I still... Like, of course... I still love my kid anyway. You know, no matter what he does, I still love him. It's just like, wow. It's just like, wow. And, and to have so many. Is this blessedness only for the circumcised? Why, do they, why are they still on the freaking peckers, man? Let's move on, please. Or also for the uncircumcised. If we have been saying that Abraham's faith was credited to him as righteousness... Under what circumstances was it credited? Was it after he was circumcised or before? Was it not after? It was not after, but before. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of righteousness that he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. So they're talking about a spiritual. He, he was disconnected from the world while his body was still of the world. So then, he is the father of all who believe but have not been circumcised in order that righteousness might be, might be credited to them. And he is also the father of the circumcised who not only circumcised, but who also walk in the step footsteps of the faith that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised.
Oh my gosh. It was not through law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. For if those who live by the law are heirs, faith has no value and the promise is worthlessness. I mean, worthless. Worth, yeah. Worthless. Because law brings wrath. Oh, yeah. And where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, the promise comes by faith so that it may be by grace and by and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offsprings, not only the, to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. <laughs> As it is written, I have made you... A father of many nations, so is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead and calls things that are not as though they were. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed, and so become the father of many nations. And so became the father of many nations, just as it be had been said to him, so shall your offsprings be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb had was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God's power to do what he had promised. This is why it was credited to him righteousness. The words it was credited to him were written not for him alone, but also for us to whom God will credit righteousness. For us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, he was delivered over death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Well, there you go. All you can do, that's probably why. And you know what? All you can do is put it down. Boom, I got faith that God is going to work it out. Jesus is my buddy, man. He's never let me down, and if my son has to go through some trials to grow and to become a man, then that's God's will. Yeah, I'll be sad for him. It'll be a bummer, but we all have to go through this, the Roman pains. But I have faith in the Lord, and everything's going to work out, you know? Bad things happen to good people, and good things happen to bad people. So, you know what I realize? That there's a there's a um a verse in here. I, you know, I have two, I have two cell phones now because my son was punished off his cell phone. So now I shouldn't do this because my Bible is here, but it's hard. My eyes. Let me tell you something, you guys. My eyes are bugging out sometimes when I'm reading. The words are like, blah, 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 and they kind of float. My eye doctor said I was gonna have cataracts. And I rebuke that in Jesus' name because I really like to read. So anyway, dead to sin and live, alive in Christ. Let's read that and let's end in, uh, on a positive note. <laughs> because the devil had me for a few, but we're going to close out in a good note. Because you know what? The devil is always defeated because God is the champion of everything. And even if we don't understand what's happening and it seems like we're going through rough waters, remember that in the storms of life, Jesus was asleep. So if he can sleep soundly, we can sleep soundly next to him. And that is the promise that I have to live on because I got nothing else, kids. Nothing. 
because only God can make this really bad thing disappear. But God can also make this really bad thing something really good. So, who am I to interfere with any type of plans God has? I just am going to keep on walking in faith, keep on spreading love, loving my child as much as I can, loving the world, trying not to beat myself up about being not the best mom in the world, and just keep the faith, I guess, listen to some music, do a couple of other things I'm not supposed to be doing, and then I uh, guess go to sleep. In Jesus' name, all we can do is pray and have faith in the Lord who has give us, given us every single reason, every single reason to trust him. And not one, not two. He has never let me down, and I don't think he's going to now. But I have to report that the third day into my 90-day review of my ministry, not going so well. So we need to focus back on what's important and get right back on track. Laser focus for the Lord. In Jesus' name, have a great night. Hey, Paula, you're late to the party. Catch you later. Bye.